joining us now, and this has been a long time in the waiting. It's a big buildup. Uh, his commitment became public last Friday. It was his granddad's birthday. He chose a special day of significance. And I said, you know what? I think that's great. Uh, I remember when uh, Chuba Hubbard was committed to Oklahoma State, the running back out of Canada, and waited to announce on Mother's Day because he wanted to pay tribute to his mom by announcing his college commitment on Mother's Day. I think Garrett Rangel had the same idea to uh, pay tribute to his granddad and uh, make him special by announcing his commitment on his birthday. So now it's uh, public this week, had a lot of academic stuff going on, and uh, we finally get a chance to talk to Garrett on the radio show today. Uh, congratulations, young man. How are you? Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. How did the academic, the SAT stuff and everything play out for you this week? It was it was actually really hard to do because, you know, in Texas right now, it's a pretty bad snowstorm. So all the, all the electricity is going in and out. So I would have to do like 15 minutes and then power would go off. So it was kind of hard to do it this week. <laughs> no, no kidding. And and uh, as far as now you live in Frisco, in fact, yesterday uh, we had uh, former Oklahoma State Cowboy receiver, uh, Dewan Woods, that played for a while in the NFL. He has the ultimate athlete uh, workout facility there in Frisco. Uh, we were talking to him. We didn't really get into the power issue. Have, has that been a problem uh, for your family? Have you guys lost power some? Yeah, we we lost power almost every single day this week. Uh, I think yesterday was the only day we didn't lose power, and that was the only day I had to take my full SAT test. <laughs> well, there there you go. Just just in time to get the full test in. Uh, give folks a, a, an indication. We'll talk football here in a minute, but this has been crazy. In fact, the NCAA announced this week that the moratorium on, on in-person recruiting will continue through the end of May. So uh, through the end of May, which is, you know, during a big chunk of, of what would be your recruiting period, still no coach is able to leave campus, come to your mm -hmm. school or your home. Mike Gundy can't make an in-home visit to the, to the Rangel family. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't go on, you can go on campus. You just can't, go spend time in the facility and, and with the coaches person to person. What's this, uh, what's this recruiting been like with, uh, with COVID-19 and not being able to see the coaches in person? You know, it's been, it's been crazy, but you know, like my parents always tell me, cause sometimes, you know, I get frustrated with this whole process. My parents are telling me God has a plan and, you know, we just got to follow by it. So I'm really not, since I committed and everything, I really feel like a whole like relief has been, like uh, lift it from my shoulders, so I, I feel I feel good still. But you know, we'll get we'll get down there soon enough. Well, and, and through the process, and I, I think in in some you know in some ways it's changed to where they've loosened up on the time, uh, how much time you can you know spend or how often mm -hmm. you can talk to coaches. Uh, I know for you, uh, the important uh, individuals were Tim Rattay, the quarterback coach. Uh, mm -hmm. Casey Dunn, the offensive coordinator, and obviously Coach Gundy, the head coach. And uh, how how well do you feel like you've been able to interact with them and and kind of get to know them and realize that you know what I want those guys to coach me. Yeah, so they're they're each great coaches, and I think they're the best coaches in the country. I think when they offered me last year, last April. We started talking. Me and Coach Jay started talking like pretty much every re every week, and it just our relationship has become so strong. I feel like I feel like I can, I can talk to any of those guys about anything, you know, any personal issues, football, family, and anything. Well, and and let's talk about the football because that is a huge part of it. You play at a unique school in Lone Star. They've been featured in TV commercials. You guys are right there around the corner from the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, you get to play some of your games in the Star, which is an unbelievable mm -hmm. facility. Uh, speaking of coaching, I think that's one of the best high school coaching staffs. I've done a little research on, on uh, you know, everybody from your head coach to your offensive coordinator and, and quarterback coach. And 
you've got a pretty good set of coaches there at Lone Star. Talk about what that's been like playing in that school. And you've been, an, you know, you got an early start at being their starting quarterback. You've got two years of that duty. Uh, I got to think that's tremendous preparation for you to go to the next level. Yeah, I think, you know, all those coaches, all the coaches at Lone Star, they've always pushed me to be the best I can. You know, even when we wake up for those 6 a.m. lists and I'm not, I'm not feeling too good. They always push us to be the best we can. And I think it's just a blessing, you know, because we, we have we, all the coaches and, and the kids, we all say, you know, love you to each other. And I think that's like a big thing for our family, our family atmosphere. And it makes all the coaches and kids so close and all the camaraderie. And it's just, it's just a great feeling at Lone Star. Two varsity seasons uh, as, as a, a quarterback and you've accumulated – uh, over 7,200 yards of passing uh, yards. Uh, your completion percentage is is right there, knocking on the door of 70%. Uh, but here's the thing, Garrett. As long as I've been doing this, and I've been I'm 60, I've been doing this since uh, you know I could name quarterbacks back in the 80s that I you know that I covered in the recruiting process, and I've worked. You know, for for national people, I've worked for regional people. I've got a lot of friends at Dave Campbell's Texas football. My parents, uh, one, you know, their best friends were Dave and Reba Campbell. I mean, I remember uh, I was three years old, but I remember when Dave Campbell started that magazine. So I've been doing this a long time. And when I look at quarterbacks, the absolute first thing I look at is touchdown to interception ratio. And the reason is when you're the quarterback, your job is to put points on the board, help your offense score, mm-hmm. and take care of the football. 77 touchdowns to 15 interceptions. That's an outstanding touchdown to interception ratio. How proud of that in particular are you? You know, I think that's a big goal for our offense. You know, every week we go in to protect the ball. You know, if we protect the ball, we, we're going to win games. I think, uh, it really showed, you know, we played North Forney the first week, and I think like the opening drive, I threw a pick six. You know, that doesn't really happen. But and I think that's why we kind of lost the game. But I think, you know, the way the way I pride myself on taking care of the ball, I think this is the big is just a big big factor, another reason why I play the sport. Well, again, like I said, that's that's a, a tremendous uh, tremendous uh, touchdown interception ratio and. And it's always going to be the thing I look at first. The other thing I like to look at is tape because I want to see the best plays, the worst plays. And I brought this up with you, and you you really, uh, which is okay because, you know, uh, your job isn't to agree with me. In watching tape on you, you can throw all the routes, short, intermediate, deep. But you really, the thing that struck me with both your release and also, the way you throw the deep ball was a direct comparison to a guy that played here. He's with the Steelers now, Mason Rudolph. Mm-hmm. Mason had that, that – in fact, they just mentioned his one start was in week 16, and they said, man, what a great deep ball this guy throws. Your deep ball seems to do the same thing. It, it doesn't – it's not so much on a dime or, or on a on an arrow type. You are able to kind of drop it down in in like drop it into a bucket and when i asked you about that you just kind of said i don't really notice that but thanks you know (laughs) Uh, since since we've talked have you gone back and looked at some of your deep deep passes because that really when you can drop it into the receiver that's going to prevent a lot of interceptions and receivers love that ball that just kind of drops in on them Mm -hmm. Uh, have you looked at that or are we still at the point thanks i hadn't really noticed uh, yeah, I actually, I actually went back and filmed my film for my for my sophomore year and look look at some of it. And yeah, I think you know it's a lot of off season work, a lot of you know trying to throw it into a bucket type stuff. Really helps with that, you know. No doubt, you've been invited. This is the last thing we'll let you go because I know you got other things to do. You've been you've been invited to Elite Eleven. How much? How how big a deal is that to you? Oh, that's a that's a big deal for me and for my family. You know, I'm, I'm I remember as a little kid, you know, watching those those YouTube videos and all those like the top eleven guys in the country going and compete. And I like I told myself that's 
that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to be, you know. So, but we got the regional coming up. I think it's in April, and yeah, I'm just looking forward to it. looking forward to go compete against against some of the best guys in the country. Well, I know that uh, you've seen uh, uh, you've seen some some of Marshall uh, Levinson from our staff, and we're mm-hmm. both going to be down there for the Under Armour uh, event in March. Uh, so we're looking forward to seeing a lot of the DFW prospects, you know, at that Under Armour All American camp. Um, mm-hmm. Last last thing, I kind of lied. Last thing, <laughs> as the quarterback commit, uh, you know, you're you're going to be a guy that that probably does some recruiting. They're going to be guys that say, "Oh, wow, man, uh, you know, he's going to Oklahoma State. Yeah, I, I want to play on the same team as Garrett." You know. Um, mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about that because you really the quarterback is always going to be a top leader. That kind of starts when you're committed, not just necessarily when you walk on campus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I've been, you know, I've been looking at some guys that have just been that have been offered by Oklahoma State. You know, some lineman, O lineman guys, and I've, I've been really trying to talk to, uh, you know, Avion Jones. You know, DBS South Lake Carroll. Me and him go way back. So I haven't really been on my phone too much this week because you know the power outage and stuff like that. But I've been. I think Avion's the biggest one I've been talking to right now. Well, and make sure any of those offensive linemen, that's called self-preservation. You want you <laughs> want to recruit as many of those guys as you can. So <laughs> yes, make, make sure you make sure you're good to those guys. In fact, there's uh, uh, there's a kid from not Lone Star, but Frisco High School, Cole Hudson, that's uh-huh. been offered that is uh, is a is an offensive lineman. So, hey, listen, I appreciate your time. Uh, congratulations. I know Oklahoma State fans are excited about uh, your commitment. So, uh, again, good luck with Elite 11. Everything you've got going there with uh, Lone Star High School will be following your senior year and look forward to that as well. And Garrett, thanks for the time. Uh, yes, sir. Th- yes, sir. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, Garrett Rangel, the uh,